does fear hold you back? Do you avoid knitting something because you're worried about making a mistake? Have you asked yourself what you're worried about? Um, do you not take workshops because you're worried about not being good enough or not being as good as everybody else? Do you worry that everybody else in a workshop or a knitting group is better than you? Does fear hold you back? Hello, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. You can find all my social media links and how to sign up to my newsletter, my online courses, my online shop, my pattern shops, all that stuff below this video. And also on my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So I used to write uh, a blog. I used to blog quite regularly, two, three, four times a week sometimes. Towards the end, it kind of fizzled out a little bit, and I can't actually remember how many years it is since I stopped blogging, but it just kind of gradually fizzled out, and I think maybe when I started trying to be more active on social media, I feel like I only have capacity for so much, and I think a lot of the stuff I used to share on my blog, now YouTube has kind of taken over. But I do have some old blog posts, which I do think contain quite good advice, so I so I thought I would share some of those old blog posts in video forms and also update them if I feel they need updating. So this is a blog post that I wrote a few years ago called Does Fear Hold You Back? And I will leave the link to the original blog post below this video. So if you prefer to read it, you can do. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So Does Fear Hold You Back? Um, I know fear has held me back at times. Does lack of confidence hold you back? It's definitely held me back at times and I think we're probably all like that. One of the things I see the most in my workshops is lack of confidence and fear of making a mistake. A lot of knitters are really worried about making mistakes or not being good enough or not being as good as anyone else. And I think that's probably true in other areas of our lives as well. I think Quite often in various areas of our life, we're worried about making a mistake or not being good enough or not being as good as everybody else or we're comparing ourselves to everybody else. In knitting, I think sometimes confidence in your abilities can actually make a big difference and make you a better knitter. And most knitters I meet are actually better than they think they are. So today I'm going to talk about some of the issues related to uh, fear and lack of confidence in your knitting abilities. This can apply to other parts of your life as well and it certainly also applies to crochet. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So I have a very good friend and although she's not a very experienced knitter, she's been knitting for quite a few years but she doesn't knit a lot and she's not a very fast knitter and uh, she's not a very experienced knitter. But she's a lot more capable than she thinks she is. Almost every time we meet, um, and I must admit since COVID we've been meeting a lot less for various reasons, uh, not necessarily just to do with COVID. Obviously that was the problem in 2020 and 2021, but since then other things have happened so we don't see each other as often. But I used to find that every time I used to meet her she would ask me to uh, show her a technique and then the next time I met her, she'd ask me to show her the same technique again and over and over again. And sometimes I would just say, see if you can remember how to do it. And usually she could. Occasionally she might just need a little bit of reminder and a little bit of kind of um, pushing in the right direction. But a lot of the time she could actually remember it. And recently she said to me that she hasn't knitted for a few months and she's in the middle of a couple of projects. And one of the things she needs to do is cast on for a new part of the project. And she said, I don't remember when, I don't, I don't know if I can remember how to cast on. And I said, well, just sit down with a pair of needles and see if it comes back to you. I'm sure once you start actually doing it and thinking about it, it'll probably come back to you. So I don't know whether she's done that because I haven't spoken to her for a few weeks. But um, lack of confidence is something that can really hold us back. And if you lack confidence in one part of your life, I find that that quite often... Um, is the same for other parts of your life as well. So let me know if you find that true, if you find you lack confidence in one part of your life, that that kind of um, crosses over to other parts of your life. Uh, it is certainly something that I see in a lot of people that I've started to notice since I started teaching. Don't let fear hold you back. Um, what's the worst that can happen? You make a mistake, you rip it out. You cast them for something that's challenging and that you're not sure what you can do. 
you might be able to do it you might not you may make a mistake you may rip it out you may try again you may rip it out again you may try again and eventually you might be able to do it or you might decide it's not for you and rip it out and cast on something else good thing with yarn is that it's reusable so obviously some yarn if you rip it out a lot of times it might wear the yarn out a little bit but most yarns can cope with being ripped out once or twice as long as it's not so um fragile that when you rip it out it actually uh, kind of falls apart most yarns can be ripped out and then knitted something you can knit something else with it a lot of knitters don't like having to rip out if you like knitting and you have to rip out something and re-knit it if you think about it this way it may help you a little bit if you have to re-knit it you get more knitting time for the same amount of yarn so it's actually better value for money knitting and if you're not in a hurry if you're not working to a deadline if knitting is not your job and you just enjoy knitting then if you knit something twice then you get more time out of that knitting out of that yarn before you have to buy more yarn so in some ways it is really better value for money <laughs> to knit something more than once if you want to knit something but you feel you don't have the skills try it you may surprise yourself just take it one row at a time i know that most experts <laughs> say that you should read the pattern and try and make sure you understand everything in it before you start knitting i don't always think that's a great idea um i think sometimes when you're reading things it's difficult to understand it and when you're actually doing it on your needles it's a lot easier i quite often find that um if i'm actually sitting with the needles in my hand and trying to work out what to do on my needles it makes a lot more sense to me and i think probably most people are like that I quite often, especially when I do shows, uh, because I sell a lot of my patterns, I find that people will come, they'll pick up a pattern, they'll look through it, and then they'll go, oh, I don't think I can do that, I don't understand this. And that's because they're just like reading it and trying to understand it. Well, knitting pattern is really technical writing, and it's quite complex technical writing, really. It has a lot of abbreviations and um, different techniques and all the techniques and abbreviations are usually explained in the pattern um i mean i don't explain how to do a knit stitch and how to do a pull stitch in my pattern because i assume you know that my patterns aren't like learn to knit patterns but i do expect you to be able to knit and purl and if i say cast on i expect you to know at least one basic cast on and the same with cast off and if there are any different techniques that i wanted to use i always explain those in the pattern and recently i've also started linking to youtube tutorials if i have them um obviously i can't always go back to all my old patterns when i produce a new tutorial and link it in because i have too many patterns for that but one thing i've done in the last probably year or so six months to a year maybe is add like a list of tutorials to my patterns if i have tutorials that are appropriate to that pattern and most techniques you can find videos for on youtube um so don't worry about not knowing all the techniques and don't worry if not everything makes sense the first time you read through the pattern sometimes you do have to actually sit down and try and work it out on the needles before it makes sense sometimes when i get questions about patterns the answer truly is just do what the pattern says just follow the pattern um and i can't really i don't feel like i can really email that as a reply to somebody so somebody might be might be a shawl they might not understand the shaping well the pattern may say something like knit two yarn of a knit one yarn of a knit one yarn of a knit one yarn of a knit two and so on and sometimes people worry about because the shaping doesn't make sense to them and i just have to kind of say just do what it says and it will make sense once you're doing it and you can see the shape emerging i think that especially applies to a lot of shawl shapes especially maybe unusual shawls or new shapes to you and um i think people read the pattern and they don't understand it whereas sometimes i think they need to just sit and actually knit it for it all to make sense and i find that i can't say just follow the pattern but that is sometimes what you just need to do. You just need to actually do what the pattern says. Not what you think it says, but what it says. So just follow the abbreviations. All patterns sh should have a list of abbreviations. And um, even if the pattern uses abbreviations you're not used to, there should be a list of abbreviations in all patterns. Um, 
obviously these days anyone can put patterns out online so you get people who are just casual knitters or people who run yarn shops and things like that who will just write a pattern and publish it and not really have it professionally checked and write it to a professional standard and i have seen some patterns um mostly that have been given out free in yarn shops or been downloaded free online that do not uh contain all the information they need um which makes it very frustrating <laughs> but usually a pattern will tell you everything you need to know would you like to take a knitting workshop but you worry that your skills aren't up to the job well if you're worried that you're not good enough that you don't actually have the experience needed read what the workshop listing says does it say what experience is required um, if not ask the organizer or the teacher or the shop where the um, workshop is being held quite often it will tell you the teachers and if you google them you might find their website or you could ask the shop owner or the organizer for an email address for the teachers so you can actually email and say these are my skill levels Am I good enough to take this workshop? Workshop is a description that I send out to yarn shop owners and show organizers because most of my workshops are hosted and organized by somebody else and I just turn up and teach. I have like a standard list of workshops and like a blurb for each workshop that I send out and there it does say skills required and I will say exactly what I expect people to do. I used to kind of say you know intermediate knitters but was an intermediate knitter so now I tend to actually list skills required so it is important to follow those skills I did once teach a um it's quite a few years ago um a sock knitting workshop in at an event in London it was half a day and doing socks in half a day is a lot of work um it was actually going to be two at a time socks so you knit two socks at a time on a circular needle and the kind of like skills needed did clearly state that you should have knitted at least a couple of pairs of socks and be familiar with basic sock construction either top down or toe up didn't matter but i wanted people who were kind of used to knitting socks but because people were booking online people weren't necessarily reading that or they were just ignoring it and when i got there the workshop was in the morning and then i was teaching something else in the afternoon I think it was something like two and a half or three hours I'm not sure and I turned up and I sort of said and it was quite a big class like 12 people something like that maybe um and I said right so you've all knitted a pair of socks before right and half of them were like and I was like so who's knitted a pair of socks before and I think like half the class put their hand up and let's just say it was one of the toughest classes I've ever taught because most of them hadn't actually read the description and um, hadn't followed the instructions basically. I think if they'd all been at the right experience level it would have been better. Also partly my fault because I think teaching sock knitting in half a day is a lot and especially two at a time socks so I wouldn't do that now um, but you know until you do these things you don't necessarily know so i made i made a mistake and i learned a lesson as well i did survive the lesson um if i teach a workshop now where i think people might not be at the level required i will quite often take notes from another class that is a level below so if i was going to teach two at a time socks where i expected people to have experience knitting socks for example then i would also take my basic beginner sock workshop notes and pattern with me so that anyone who didn't have the required level of experience and skills could just do an easier version of the class basically so i have learned some important lessons as well during that uh, whole um experience so if you want to take a workshop do you worry that everybody else is going to be faster than you better than you um I've had people come to my workshops who've said I'm not a very fast knitter, I'm a very slow knitter or I'm not very experienced, I'm not sure if I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. If you're particularly worried about something, have a word with the teacher before the class starts so that they're aware of it. And um, if not, just relax. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. I try and say at the beginning of a workshop for people just to work at their own pace and to ignore what everybody else are doing. Um, I 
most of my workshops will work so that I will explain something, I will demonstrate something, I will get everyone started, I will work on help everyone get started. And obviously, depending on how big the class is, I can't get around everyone in the space of a couple of minutes. So sometimes it takes me a bit of time to get around everyone. And I quite often find that people sitting next to each other try and help each other out, which is very nice. But I do eventually get around everyone and then people just work at their own pace for a while. And then I will bring the class together for the next step kind of thing. So the more experienced knitter and the faster knitters will maybe just work more before we move on to the next thing. Um, but they won't have learned any more by the end of the day. And I have only probably once had somebody not be able to do what I wanted to teach them in the class. And I've been teaching workshops now for 16, 17 years, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, 18 years. And I do remember one time when a lady refused to try something because she was there with a friend and she said that her friend was the better knitter and she said and her friend was struggling with it and she said if my friend is struggling to do it I won't be able to do it and I said well you don't know that you could be better at this one thing than your friend is but she just refused I spent all afternoon trying to get her to try and she just point blank refused and just stuck with what we'd done in the morning so, I mean, that was her choice. I tried. I couldn't, you know, I had to teach everybody else as well. So every so often I would just try and encourage her. But she had it in her mind that she could not do this thing. Um, it was Norwegian Pearl, by the way. So she just stuck with the Continental Knit Stitch all morning, all day, uh, where she wouldn't try the, the Norwegian Pearl because she was worried that she wouldn't be able to do it. And I've never had anyone not be able to do it, I don't think. Um, some people have struggled. But most people usually can manage to do it uh, with a bit of practice. Some of the feedback I regularly get from my workshops is that I'm a good teacher and I'm a very patient teacher. I love hearing that. Somebody told me that just this last weekend, which I love hearing. Um, I also get uh, comments like that I'm very good at catering to different abilities and having different abilities within the class. Now, some of that comes from experience because I've been teaching for a long time now. And before I taught knitting, I started teaching when I was in my late teens, early 20s. I taught horse riding. First, I was helping out with the riding stables where I used to ride in Norway. And I would occasionally help out with like younger kids and the less experienced kids and help out in lessons. And then when I moved to the UK, I worked as a riding instructor for nearly two years. And I taught a lot of horse riding. Um, and it, age groups from three years old to 80 I think so from complete beginner to more experience so I did a lot of teaching then then I taught Sunday school for quite a few years which is a bit different more about uh, crowd control half the time and then I got into teaching knitting so I've always kind of done some form of teaching so I am quite experienced as a teacher and I am able to adjust the class to what is needed and to cater to all different abilities. Sometimes that means that I leave the class completely exhausted, but that's fine. <laughs> I can recover the next day. But I have been told I'm very good at catering to different abilities within the class. And then I'm very patient, which is about the only area of my life I am patient. My family think I'm the most impatient person ever, but when I teach, I'm very, very patient. My classes can be quite intense. I try and pack them with as much information as possible and sometimes I think maybe I overdo it and I have tried to with some classes I've had to readjust that. Brioche for example for most people just getting the hang of the basic two color brioche in a day's workshop is enough. Some people might be able to move on to some increases but most people are okay just sticking with getting the hang of the basic two color brioche. So I've had to learn to adjust my expectations as well I do want to, you to go away feeling like that you've learned something and I also want to give you the confidence to knit where you want to knit. One thing I did in the blog post um, was include some feedback I've had from workshops. Now this is this blog post, I forgot to write down which when it was originally posted, this a few years ago. Um, and one lady who came to a Shetland lace knitting workshop said that, I can't remember if she'd done any lace knitting before or not, I think everyone else in the class had done some lace knitting and some of them had done quite a bit of lace knitting. Now, I can't remember whether she'd done no lace knitting before or had done a tiny bit, but I think she was the least experienced lace knitter in the class. After the class, she said, 
thank you for your workshop yesterday i had a very enjoyable day after a scary start when i realized that not only did everyone else know what they were doing but most of them were wearing their previous projects thank you for your patience and i can now work out what some of the other patterns are going on about which previously baffled me by the second row <laughs> so she'd obviously come to the workshop panicked a little bit because she thought you know people are saying oh i'm wearing this lace shawl that i knitted i'm wearing this lace shawl i knitted and i've knitted that lace shawl i've knitted that and people like sharing their experience and showing off what they've knitted and you know wearing stuff they've knitted and she was probably sitting there thinking everybody else know what they're doing i'm the least experienced here i haven't done any lace knitting or i've had a go at it and i just can't get the hang of it so she was probably a bit terrified at the start of the class but clearly she kept her cool and uh, did really really well and really enjoyed the class and felt like she really learned something knitting should be fun and relaxing you want your knitting to be challenging at times um so you feel like you really achieved something or you may just want your knitting to help you relax after a busy day um, at work or looking after the family. Some people have very demanding lives or very demanding personal lives, very demanding family situations. And they just want to pick up their knitting at the end of the day and relax. And that's and they don't want to do anything complicated. They just want to keep it nice and simple to relax. Other people want something that challenges them. They want to learn new techniques and they don't want to do anything that's too easy. We all have different reasons what we, why we knit. Um, whatever your reason for knitting is, you should enjoy it. So whether you prefer challenging projects or whether you prefer easy projects, you should enjoy it. And if you find yourself constantly knitting things that you are not enjoying, you need to think about where you're knitting and why you're knitting. I sometimes do projects that I enjoy for a while and then I go off them or projects that I think I might enjoy and then I don't enjoy them as much as I thought I would. My situation is a little bit different because obviously I design knitting patterns. So I have to, if I've committed myself to designing something for a magazine, I have to finish it. There are a few projects that I was doing, going to self-publish that I've abandoned just because I got bored with them. And that does happen quite often. <laughs> So that whatever we knit whatever our situation is you know there are times when we get bored with the project and it's tempting to put it aside and start something else and if you're just knitting it for you and you would rather knit something else and the main reason you knit is to enjoy yourself and having multiple uh, works in progress doesn't stress you out there's no reason why you can't put something down and start something else so I hope I have during this video been able to talk you through some of the things um, related to fear holding you back and confidence. What I'm trying to say is don't worry about it. It's only knitting. Don't let fear stopping you going to a workshop that you like to take. Um, you're all there to learn. Everyone's there to learn. Some people do turn up to a workshop where they actually all know <laughs> The topic i've had people i've had one lady once turned up to a sock knitting class and then while we were waiting for everyone to turn up she showed me several pairs of socks she'd knitted they look, all look perfect so i wasn't quite sure why she was there but she enjoyed it um people have all sorts of reasons for taking a class sometimes it's a social thing and getting out of the house and having something to do other times it's because they want to learn that particular skill and that particular technique and to knit that particular thing so that's important to remember as well but don't let fear hold you back what's the worst that can happen ask yourself if i make a mistake what's the worst that can happen i go to this workshop i am completely out of my depth i can't keep up i can't learn anything okay you wasted your day and a bit of money hopefully if the teacher is any good they will make sure you can keep up and they'll adjust uh, what they're teaching you to your skill level so that you are still coming away with learning something. I even find that when I used to teach complete beginner classes, which I don't anymore, but I used to quite a few years ago. Most people who came to those classes would had learned to knit at some point in their life, but it was a long time ago. And once we got started, most of them could kind of remember the basics. And then I did have one or two who were complete beginners and never picked up a set of knitting needles before, which is difficult when you have that in the same class, somebody who actually do know how to knit. They just haven't knitted for 10 or 20 years. Um, but the sign of a good teacher is to be able to adjust your class to fit everyone in the class. So don't let fear hold you back. Um, remember, what's the worst thing that can happen? 
make a mistake with your knitting, you rip it out and you re-knit it. You go to a workshop, you feel a bit out of your depth, you still will learn something. You go to a knitting group, you think everyone's going to be good, better than you, you find that actually they're not and that uh, people are interested in where you're knitting and that maybe you are one of the better knitters even. And even if you're not, who cares? You're there to learn and you're there to enjoy knitting. And the most important thing when it comes to your knitting or crochet or whatever hobby you're doing is that you enjoy it. That's why we spend time and effort on it. And I think it is easy to sometimes lose sight of that. So whatever you do, make sure you enjoy it. That's the most important thing. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I will drop the link below to the blog post that this video is based on. Um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.